Hello and welcome back to Selenium Training. In this video tutorial, we will be looking at Java classes and objects. We will also see how to use them with Selenium. We are going to cover these topics, declaring classes, member variables and methods or functions. Then we will be creating objects and working with objects, variables and methods. We will also see what are value types and reference types. After that, we will be looking at static and non-static members and then working with constructors. Before starting, I have few important points to discuss with you. The first one is, Java is developed for our programming needs over the time. It's not like Java is there and we are using it. When Java was created, there was a need for much more powerful and high-level object-oriented programming language and that was the reason Java was created. After that, over the time, it has been improved and enhanced with more and more features. It's not like Java is some alien language or it's not like Java is there and we are using it. It's like Java is created for our programming needs and to make it a lot easier and productive. The next one is, whatever Java rules or syntaxes we see, they are developed for real world scenarios and for a purpose and the purpose is to make programming a lot easier and productive. In this tutorial, we will be seeing Java concepts like classes, objects, static and non-static members, constructors, there are rules associated with them. There are syntaxes associated with them. Sometimes people may get confused why these rules are there or why do I need to follow this syntax. Those Java rules or syntaxes are there because we need them to make programming a lot easier and productive. When you learn those concepts and when you start working with them, then you will understand how useful they are and why those rules or syntaxes are there. The next one is, you may need to repeat the videos multiple times to learn these technical topics. Some people may get in the first time or some people may need to go through the videos two or three times. Repeat the videos multiple times until you are comfortable with them or until you learn them properly. Going further, you need to practice a lot to learn them, then after that to use them and to become expert in these topics. One good practice is, whatever is covered in a tutorial, consider that as exercise and try to do on your own. Try to do that immediately after watching the video and it will be more effective learning. Let's start with declaring classes. Object-oriented programming is very important. Selenium WebDriver is purely object-oriented. Also, in terms of development, Object-oriented programming is very effective and saves a lot of time. It's also very easy to maintain. Let's create a class to represent a real-world object. For example, let's take a product. If you go to an e-commerce website, let's take Amazon. Then let's go to Amazon site. And then let's go to a product, Kindle Fire. If you look at this product, this product has product name. This is the product name. This product has price. It's 99 pounds. It has got price. And also this product will be having a product ID. In an e-commerce store, to identify each product individually, you will be having a product ID. For example, here I think this is the product ID. It is saying product and this is the product ID and there is some URL. For each product, there will be a product ID. You can also call it as stock keeping unit. It's a technical word. So let's create a class to represent a product. I'm going to create a new Java project. I'm right clicking here. Then you can go to new, then click on Java project. Let's give the name as chapter seven. Then Java, accept all the defaults, click on finish. Now, let's create a class called product. I'm going to chapter 7 Java project. Then right click on SRC folder. Then new. Then go to class. This is the way you can create a class. Click on class menu. It will open new Java class dialog. Let's give the class name as product. Then let's give the package as well. Package name as com. 
my store dot product then accept all the defaults and click on finish now our class is created it's in a package called com dot my store dot product we are going to have all the classes related to product in this package let's go ahead and create the class let me get the class syntax I have already got the class syntax in notepad document this is the syntax of the class if I copy that into Eclipse this is the syntax of a class a class is going to start with a access level then there is a class keyword then class name after that whatever in the braces it is called class body which contains all the code for the class and its objects then we will be having fields to represent properties or state then we will be having constructors to assign state for new objects after that we will be having methods or functions for the behavior if you see the class code here public represents access level with access level public it means that the class is available everywhere then we have class keyword then we have class name which is product after that we'll be writing all the required code for the class like fields constructors methods don't get confused by methods or functions both are same in object oriented programming functions in a class are called methods so we will be using the name methods more frequently than functions let me copy these comments into the class these are the comments let me copy into class then let's delete these okay our product class is declared now we need to write its members let's start with fields and methods regarding constructors we will see them later and also regarding static fields we will also see them later for now let's look into non-static fields the difference between static and non-static is like this when a field or method is specific to object or its object level then we are going to make it as non-static when a field or method is class level it's common to all objects then we are going to make it as static we will be seeing constructors and static members later we need to learn classes and objects step by step you can't learn everything at a time because they are very technical and you will be overloaded let's start with fields what are fields a product is going to have a product is going to have its name and a product is going to have its price then a product is going to have its SKU ID SKU stands for stock keeping unit there are other fields as well like description weight color all those but for now let's stick to these three fields a product is going to have these three fields and we need to represent that in our class let me copy the syntax of the field this is the syntax of the field a field is going to have access level then we will be specifying whether it's static or not then it's data type then it's variable name right now we are not dealing with static so let me just delete that so this is the syntax of non static fields coming to name let me say it's public then its data type is string then ends with semicolon coming to price it's public its type is double then it ends with semicolon coming to SKU ID it's public then it is also of type string similar to name then it ends with semicolon now our fields are ready we are saying that product class has three fields it has name of type string it has price of type double it has SKU ID of type string let's create methods or functions now I'm going to copy the syntax this is the syntax for a method or function let me copy that in Eclipse if you look at the syntax a method is going to have access level then you can give static keyword to make it static then it's going to have written data type written data type specifies 
what data type the method is returning then we have method name after that we have a number of parameters these all are parameters the method is taking that you give after method name right now we are not looking at static so I can just delete the static part the code within the braces that will represent the method body all the code that falls within these two braces that represents method body you can write all your code to do calculation or processing here once you calculate what you want you are going to return that you need a return statement like this return return data type value the data type of the return value must match the methods declared return type you can't return a string value from a method which is declared to return double you can return primitive data types and also complex data types like arrays and objects the return type should be void if the method does not return a value sometimes you will be just doing some processing or actions in a method you don't want to return anything in that case the return type should be void let's go ahead and write a method I'm going to say like this a product is going to have a purchase method purchase method allows us to purchase the product so I can say public then its return type is void it is just purchasing we don't want to return anything then the method name as purchase and in the method we will be having logic or code to purchase the product so I can say logic or code to purchase the product and for now let's say we just want to print out so I can say SYSO control space and we want to print that in purchase method this is what we want to print one more thing here is when you want to purchase a product it is just not single product sometimes you also want to purchase multiple products so for that we need to take a parameter where we can specify quantity the number of products we want to buy so here I can give a parameter I can say int quantity which specifies the number of products we want to buy and also let's change the print statement to represent this I can say in purchase method then for items and the actual value for items it is coming from quantity variable so I can give quantity there okay our purchase method is ready here we are saying that purchase the number of items given by the quantity in the printout statement we are just printing that in purchase method for items whatever the number given in quantity parameter let's write another method we should be also able to tell the price given a quantity how much is the price we should be able to tell that as well so here I'm saying that public then the return type should be double because we will be returning back the price so return type is double then let's give the method name as calculate price and in that we will be having the logic to calculate the price same as purchase method we will be taking a parameter which is int quantity so that's the parameter we want to take and then given the quantity we want to calculate the price and return that price how do you calculate the price its quantity into price per item the price per item it is given in the price variable so I can take that variable so here I'm saying that total price is quantity star price per product which is this price field let me give that quantity into price and this is the value we want to return so I can say like this return then the multiplication ends with semicolon now our calculate price method is also ready as mentioned earlier the return type value it should match the return data type mentioned in methods declaration here the return data type is double and we are returning double for example if I give string here I'm just giving a string for example let's say 67.89 it's going to give a error if you see the error it is saying that cannot convert from string to double we want to return double but we are returning string 
so that's why it is giving error quantity into price it returns double quantity is integer price is double overall multiplication it is going to return double let me delete this method syntax we don't need this now okay now our class is ready we have added two methods purchase and calculate price overall we are saying that we have a product class which has three fields name price and SKU ID then it has two methods purchase and then calculate price with this our class is ready let me delete one more line okay it looks good and also let me correct purchase method name it's wrong so let's say purchase okay it's fine it's time to create objects I'm going to create a new class right click on product package go to new class let's give the class name as product test so I can give product test that's the class name we want main method as well click on finish in this class you can create the objects of product class now we have product class we can create objects of that and we can work with them to create an object this is the code you have to write you need to say product then let's give the name as iPhone and then equal to new product this is how you can create object of product class here we have created a object and iPhone is the variable that is referring to that object here we have three parts in this statement the first part is declaration product iPhone that is the declaration it associates a variable name with an object type here the variable name is iPhone and the object type is product the second part is creating an instance or object which is represented by a new keyword the new keyword is a Java operator that creates the new object for the class it allocates the memory for a new object and returns a reference to that memory so that you can assign the reference to a variable here we are assigning the reference to iPhone variable the new operator also invokes the constructor we have product and then brackets this represents the constructor we haven't given any constructors in our class if you don't provide any constructors the Java language automatically provides a default constructor with no arguments that's the constructor we are calling here it is just saying product and then empty brackets the third part is initialization which is calling the constructor the new operator is followed by a call to a constructor which assigns values to fields of a new object here we are calling product constructor which is the empty constructor it's going to assign the default values to the fields of the new object this is how you can create an object similarly you can create another object I can say product then let's say desktop and then new product this is going to create another object in memory and assign the reference to desktop variable once an object reference is available you can use dot operator to access all its members and methods for example here we have iPhone which is an object reference to access its members or methods we can just say like this we can say iPhone dot then it displays all its members and methods you can see the member variables name price SKU ID then we also have the methods calculate price then purchase we also have other methods coming from object class you can see all this get class hash code notify these all are coming from object class by default every class in Java inherits from top level object class and every class is child class of object class we will see this in inheritance in more detail if you want to access name you just need to say iPhone dot name then give a name let's give the name as iPhone so I can just say the name is iPhone then in the same way you can just say iPhone dot whatever variable or method you want let's take price 
and let's give the value as 399.00 and then iPhone dot we want to access SKU ID then we can give a value to it let's give value as phone 1 that's the value for SKU ID we have accessed member variables like name price SKU ID and then we have given values to them those values will be assigned to them and stored in their memory locations now if you want to access them it is just object variable name dot whatever member variable you want let's print these out I can say like this then in the print statement iPhone dot name then again let me copy the same statement then iPhone dot whatever variable you want its price let me copy one more time then iPhone dot SKU ID let's print and let's see what the values we are getting if I run this one you can see we have got the values assigned to those member variables we have got iPhone 399.0 phone 01 let's do the same with desktop product I can just copy these statements and just paste them then change the reference to desktop so desktop dot name desktop dot price desktop dot SKU ID and change in printout statements as well let's give the desktop name as desktop then its price is 199.00 then let's give its SKU ID as desktop 01 we have assigned values to desktop object fields as well the main reason to show two products iPhone and desktop is to show you that you can have different objects and each object is going to have its own state its own set of data for fields if I run this one you are going to see iPhone product data printed out after that desktop product data printed out let's run this one you can see we have got two sets of data first set is representing iPhone product second set is representing desktop product every object is going to have its own set of data for the fields let's see this in a picture it will be more effective I have already got the picture in a file so let me open that file it's in quick launch okay this is the file in memory we have iPhone product and it is at address a1 and we have desktop product it is at location a2 a1 and a2 they are memory addresses then we have our reference variables iPhone is a reference variable it is referring to a1 memory location there we have iPhone product then desktop is a reference variable it is referring to A2 memory location and there we have desktop product you can see that each object has its own memory and it has got its own fields here iPhone product has iPhone 399 then phone 01 its own fields then desktop product has desktop 199 then desktop 01 its own fields this is how objects are stored in memory as discussed earlier the new operator in Java it is responsible for this it is responsible for creating the object in memory and returning its reference iPhone or desktop these are the reference variable of that class they are going to hold those memory locations so far we have seen member variables let's see how methods work how we can use methods with objects let's go back to Eclipse and here let's use methods in product class I can say like this I can say iPhone then dot the methods let's click on purchase let's give quantity as 3 and in the same way I can say desktop dot purchase and then let's give quantity as 5 if I run this one purchase method will be executed for each object with its own set of data let me run this one and you can see here in the output we have got in purchase method 
for items 3 which is coming from iPhone.purchase3 statement. Then we have in purchase method for items 5 which is coming from desktop.purchase5 statement. We can also access member variables in methods. For example, I can go to product class and then I can say like this in the purchase method. I can give the name. I can say print out then name. Then say in purchase method for items. Let's save this and run our tests again. If I run this one, now it's going to print out the name as well. You can see for iPhone object, it has got its name iPhone in purchase method for items 3. 3 is the quantity we have passed. Then for the next statement which is desktop object, we have got the desktop object name. It is desktop in purchase method for items 5. We have given the quantity 5 to purchase desktop product. This is how methods work. When you run a method on an object, it's going to have access to object state and it's going to use that state and do whatever required calculation or processing. Let's look at returning a value from a method. Before that, we first need to know what are parameters and arguments. Parameters refers to list of variables in a method declaration. For example, if you go to product class and then in calculate price, we are taking a parameter. We are saying that calculate price, it takes a parameter and it is of type integer and its name is quantity. Within the method body, then we can use the name quantity to represent that parameter. You can use any data type for parameter, for example, primitive data types like integer, double or complex data types like objects or arrays. Then we have arguments. Arguments are the actual values that are given for parameters when the method is invoked. Now if you are invoking this method, I can say like this, I can say iPhone dot calculate price of two iPhones. Here I am giving a quantity to, I am giving a value for the parameter. This is called argument. The parameters are used in the method body and at the runtime they will take the values of the arguments that are given in the method call. Here we are giving 2 and at the runtime 2 will be passed to quantity and in the method body quantity will be used and it will have value as 2. Then it's going to do the multiplication quantity into price per item and it's going to return that value. It's going to be a double value. And in our product test class, we are going to get that value and we can use that value. This is the code which is returning the value. If you see the definition of calculate price, it is returning double. It is coming from com.mystore.product from this package and then from product class. And this is the name calculate price and it takes a parameter and it is int quantity. Let's print the value. Let me copy this printout statement. And in that statement, I can give the calculate price method call. So I can give that method call in the printout statement. We don't need this semicolon. Let's run this. You can see we have got the price as 798. iPhone dot calculate price. It has calculated the price of two iPhones. Given that single iPhone price is 399, two iPhones price is 798, which is correct. This is how you can call a method which returns a value and you can print out the value or once you have the value stored in a variable, you can do whatever processing you want with it. So far, we have seen how to create objects and then using member variables and methods with the objects. Let's see the benefits of classes and objects. The real benefit of classes and objects is reusability and maintainability. We have our product class ready. Now if you want to create 100 products, it is the same class. You can just create objects of this class. All the member variables and methods all are available. You can create 100 products or 200 products. It's the same code. 
we are reusing the same code again and again and say in future you need to change the code you just need to come to one place it is product class you need to come here and change the logic as required and it's done it will be reflected for all the objects this is the real benefit of classes and objects they are going to make reusability and maintainability very easy there are other benefits as well let's go back to our product test we have an object an object can be referenced by a reference variable also an object can be referenced by multiple referenced variables we can have multiple variables referring to the same memory location for example here iphone and desktop they refer to two different objects if i say like this i'm saying desktop equal to iphone here i'm taking the reference of iphone and then assigning that to desktop that means iphone and desktop they both will be referring to the same object if you look at the picture the desktop will be referring to iphone product now both iphone and desktop reference variables they both are referring to iphone product object you can use any of the variables to change its state desktop product object it is no longer referenced by any variable so it will be removed and the occupied memory will be freed let's see how that works in eclipse i'm going to comment these three statements and then here we are saying that desktop equal to iphone they both will be referring to same object then using desktop reference variable we are changing the object state then we are printing that out let me print out iphone object details as well i'm just copying those printout statements and giving after desktop printout statements it's going to work like this initially iphone product with iphone details we are printing that out then desktop and iphone both referring to the same object then using desktop reference variable we are changing the object state to desktop product details so iphone details will be overwritten with desktop product details and here we are printing out we are printing with using desktop reference variable and then again we are printing with iphone reference variable let's see the output i'm going to run this and if you see the output initially we have assigned iphone to iphone product details and then we are printing out and this is the output this is printing iphone product details after that we are saying that desktop equal to iphone desktop and iphone they both are referring to the same object then we are changing the object details using desktop reference variable after that we are printing out desktop object state using desktop referenced variable then again object state using iphone referenced variable for those six printout statements this is the output if you see the output it's the same set of details that is printed two times that means desktop and iphone they both are referring to the same memory location they both are referring to the same object